thing of all these meets I've been posting is me just going, we'll wait for it to start. <laughs> okay, that'll be fun. We can edit that, yes? Yes. <laughs> Perfect, all right. Uh, Steph, we are recording. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Becky Calling and I am one of the team leads for EC Open Chat. A few other of our leads, we have Shannon Moore, who's waving at all of you. Uh, Jared Johnson, who's going to be presenting today. Let's see, we also have Georgina Dean on here, uh, but I don't know that her camera's on. I can't see Georgina, but I know you're in here. So Georgina Dean is also uh, one of our leads and Francis, who's going to be moderating our book study. She's waving at all of you. Yeah, Georgina's in the chat saying hello. Francis is waving at you. We have Bonnie. She's not able to make it today. She's like back-to-back -back presentations. Um, did I, yeah, that, yeah, I got everyone. Okay, perfect, Shannon's keep nodding and saying, yes, you did it. Uh, so we just wanna welcome all of you. We are here to support everyone in getting their Google for Education Certified Coaching uh, badge, but it's a lot more than that. If you've started looking at the curriculum, it's a full curriculum. And it's super helpful to just have a community of practice, a PLN around you to support in this endeavor and beyond. So I've already received my coaching certificate, but um, I still enjoy coming and sharing resources, seeing resources being shared. So please continue or please continue if you've already been sharing those resources. And if you're new, please share out resources that you have, ideas that you have and questions that come up um but we are going to get started each month we will go over one or two of the modules from the curriculum and uh, we'll have different coaches and different leaders presenting and then in addition we will also have the book study today we will have the amazing rick I thought you were going to wave. He's not. There we are. Rick, <laughs> who will be presenting. We will have Jared, who will present. And we will have Steph that will present. And they are all certified coaches. And then I think this next slide is mine. If you want access to the slides, the bit.ly is up there. 3O capital R at 9 MYC. Does this stand for something or this was just what it generated? Nope. That, that stands for... Uh... No, it's the generated one. Sorry. Okay. I was trying to figure that out. So yeah, that'll be on each of the slides. So you can follow along that way and you can keep up that way. And uh, this one's also mine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we will, sorry. Uh, I just want to make sure because Rick and Steph and Jared put together this amazing slide deck for each of us uh, to go through today. If you're curious as to what a certified coach is, it's uh, someone who's going to help transform your schools, utilizing technology in meaningful ways. You're working with teachers in one-on-one -on -one sessions. The questions often asked, what's the difference between a certified coach and a certified trainer? A trainer is someone who's giving just the one session here and there, or they're helping out large groups one time. They're meeting with one person one time. A coach is meeting with someone over a long span of time. Uh, and then before we move on, I do want to point out if you have specific questions about the curriculum, such as my exam, I went and took it and it froze in the middle and I couldn't finish, please know we actually don't work for Google and we did not create the curriculum. We are just putting this community, pulling this community of practice together for all educators and coaches to come in and support one another as you're going through the curriculum and the program. So if you have specifics about like the program itself or when will I find out if I got in, we can put you in contact with those people, but that's not us. We're just here to grow together. As you have questions, throw them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to Rick. Hey, that's me. All right. So what we're going to do is make sure you go to that bit.ly. Again, that's three is in the number three. O is in the, you can see it. Oh, it went away. Anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, click on the letter high or the word high. It's going to bring you to a place where you're going to circle and add your emoji drag drop and drag a red circle onto your emoji and tell us how you feel today how you feel about this whole you know thing um 
this is the type of grounding activity you might do in a class and also our training, but it's also good to do with your coaches because a big part of coaching is that emotional part, right? Building a relationship. So um, I often forget to do that because I'm usually centered on myself, but I'm curious how you feel. So go ahead and put a circle on your emoji, please. Looks like someone's smiley happy. Oh. I like these. So far, so good. You can just drag and drop one of the circles on the right-hand side to, to get that. And it's using my favorite tool, Jamboard. Jamboard is like slides, but messier. It's one of my favorite features in Google. And then once you find your emoji, add a post-it note with your name and tell us why you picked that emoji. I suppose now would be a good time for that uh, royalty-free music, right? Yes. All right, hold on. <laughs> Music is very cheery. I love it. Um, so I really want to know who threw their back out. I saw that post-it come up. I'm like, that sounds awful. And right. then I just saw somebody else said, so many new folks. Don't be nervous. Um, we're all really friendly, I promise. So feel free to share. Don't feel nervous if this is, if you are feeling that way. Um, anything else you guys saw? I see a no. lot of excited and ready to go. Excited to uh, learn on a Saturday morning. Yeah, thanks for coming on a Saturday. Yeah, I see a lot of happy people this morning, or this evening, or this night, wherever you are. And then if you currently are a coach, let us know in the chat. Just simply put yes or no. Um, Jared's going to talk a little bit more about the coaching role that he does and if it would help to be a coach in your district or not. Yeah. So, you know, are you currently a coach and that could be a technology coach that could be an instructional coach, reading coach, um, anything where you are, you have some amount of time where you're, you can work one-on-one -on -one, uh, with teachers. So sometimes coach is not always in the title, like technology integration specialist or something along those lines. And really the program is designed for people that have an a, amount of time to where they can work with somebody in a coaching type role. So if you're a 100% full-time classroom teacher, this curriculum may be uh, very difficult to do because you're gonna need that time to complete a coaching cycle, which we'll get into uh, a little bit later. So I see a lot of sort ofs and yeses and not officially. <laughs> I, I, I know that to be true. And I and think too, like Fred isn't a coach. Um, nope. With 
title per se, but he really is a coach without the title. Mm -hmm. So don't let that discourage you. Um, if you are applying, but you're not yet in that title, maybe you're still a teacher, maybe you're still doing something else. Just really don't let that discourage you because it can be done. It's just a lot of work. Um, you do have to have a hundred hours in coaching a teacher one-on-one. -on -one. So Fred, do you want to talk about how you kind of did that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, the nice thing is that 100 hours you don't need before you apply, but it is once you get the certified coaching certificate, redundant, sorry, um, once you get the coach badge, right, um, in order to maintain the coach badge, you need to post 100 hours of coaching. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to need if you're not officially a coach with that in your title is you need to get district buy-in from admin. Because one of the things when you apply is you need a letter of recommendation from some form of an administrator. Um, my job is weird because I go into 10 different elementary schools, but all it took was one principal who's like, yeah, I'll let you do that. Because, you know, he didn't have to pay me anymore. So uh, he was more than happy to let me do that. And uh, I got my thingamajig, my letter. And so, yeah, the getting the hours, though, is gonna is a bit of a challenge sometimes, right? If you're not, that's not your day job. But if you're willing to put in the time on your prep or whatever, it's attainable. And then um, there's a question in the chat. Somebody asked, do you only have to coach one teacher? Oh, my gosh. Oh, you can coach, as, <laughs> coach as many as you can take on, uh, really. Mm -hmm. Usually about eight is a good limit to, to limit yourself is about eight coaches or eight teachers a cycle just because it can get really overwhelming and depending on what your other responsibilities are um, within your school or your district, you know, you can kind of move within that, that number there. Mm -hmm. There was another question that I don't know the answer to. I, I think currently someone had asked, does the language, does the letter of recommendation need to be in English? Um, as of right now, I think the only people that are judging that are speaking English. Is that correct, Becky? Yeah, so it doesn't have to be in English, but if you can get it translated, that would be better. And I only say that because Rick is spot on. The people who are are reading the letters and reading all of that only speak English, so they will just put it through a translator and uh, read it the best they can. So if you can translate it yourself, that would be better. Right, that's what Georgia just put in. Georgina just was like, yes, uh, whatever language, but do a translated copy as well. And I will say too, if you are um, wanting to become a coach and you're wanting to move into that role or maybe into that role, like a full-time thing, and you're looking um, as this, as you are in, what you can do, one of the recommendations I have from administrators is, you know, make sure you know, you have a stump speech. So when you go to present this to your um, leadership that you can, you know, give them a good stump speech and tie it back into like school goals or district goals in ways that impact uh, students because they will really listen um, to that. And so this curriculum can be really good at, you know, building a good stump speech for that. And then we want to know where are you currently at in the Google Certified Coaches curriculum? Um, are you working on the curriculum? Are you working to pass the coach skills assessment? Are you working on your educator level one and level two certificate? Or are you working on your coaching portfolio? So all you need to do is put the number. You don't need to type out the whole thing. But we just kind of really want to see real quick, where is everybody in this um, journey? Oh, wow. Looks like a bunch of fours and one. Yeah, that's awesome. A few threes. Of <laughs> Jenna, five. Yeah, we didn't put on five that you've got it done. But yeah, <laughs> that's an option too. Awesome. Um, and if you need any resources for the level one and level two Google certifications, Global GED did a boot camp um, back in the summer. And I'm sure we'll do another one coming up in this, um, this year sometime. I don't know. People are probably like, no, not again. Um, so feel free to look at those resources if you need help passing that assessment. Everything else, um, you can use this community to really help you dive, dive in deeper and gain the knowledge that you'll need. Oh, yay. This is my favorite part because I've already mentioned how 
great. I think Jamboard is, because Jamboard is great. Um, but it is really great for what are called a gripe jam. I like it because it looks like grape jam, which is delicious. But a gripe jam is one of the things you can do when you start a coaching cycle in order to find out where the challenges lie with your coach E. Coaches, the, the people you coach. So click on one of these links to a jam one, or are we going, are we doing them in order? Are the, we... the reason there's four jams is because it can only handle so many people. Um, so let's say, um, I'm trying to think how we can, Split if you're up. wearing um, red, blue, or green, click jam one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if you're wearing any other color, click jam two. I don't, and then if it gets too full, go back to jam one. We'll do that. Yeah. That's that makes perfect sense. So um, those colors are jam one, otherwise you're jam two. But what we want you to do is uh, write down as many challenges. I can't remember what it says. Hold on. <laughs> write down as many challenges as you can think of for each scenario. Write only one challenge per sticky note. So, so we're looking for a lot of sticky notes here. And you'll have to sort your challenges later. So each one needs its own note. And don't audit your challenges. No challenge is too big or too small. Uh, write them down as they come to mind, whether it's like, oh, man, traffic was a bummer, or the copier was broken, or you know, whatever. It, nothing is too trivial. I mean, that's not true. There's probably plenty of things that are trivial, because we're going to sort them. But come up with anything that bugs you. And then you're going to put your name in the orange post-it note. So everybody's going to go ahead and pick a slide. So there's going to be 40 slides total. We actually might need jam Three. 32. Um, so feel free to pick any of those jams and find a spot. Rick's going to play some music so you can go ahead and add your name um, and find your spot because this might take a couple minutes just because we have such a large group. And the jams are on slide number seven. And they're hyperlinked right at the bottom, jam one, two, three, and four. Um, I think we should only need the first three, so we won't use yeah. Jim four. That way we can kind of stay together. But everybody, if you could just add your name to your jam, and then you're going to be using the yellow sticky notes to add your problems. So go ahead and start thinking about any type of um, problems you might be dealing with. And here comes and like, oh, and like Rick said, um, no problem is too big or too small. When you're thinking about it, think of, struggle situations that you are dealing with every day, situations with virtual learning, uh, maybe having a quarter of your class out because of quarantine, or maybe you're 100% virtual. Um, things like you just got to school or just got to work or just got started, what struggles you might have there, struggles you have on your planning period, uh, struggles with COVID-19. I think we can all list uh, a million of those struggles. Uh, whether you are hybrid, 100% virtual, or if you are 100% back to face-to-face -to -face, uh, learning. Again, think of struggles you might have with, with teaching, with learning, uh, things that are happening as you are in class. Um, one of the other, my favorite ones is struggles you might have during lunchtime, because I think we all have had those kind of struggles, especially when we are in our buildings um, doing our jobs face to face. We have a lot of duties and things like that that happen during lunchtime. Other struggles could be, you know, staff meetings, you know, what struggles you might have during staff meetings, things that happen after school. Um, and of course, things uh, when you get home, struggles that you might have when you get home. Or, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, wondering, oh my God, what am I going to do for this week's lessons? So again, nothing's too big, nothing's too small when it comes to your gripes. Thank you. 
Is that enough? Probably. Oh, the green screen is cutting off my thumb. That's a thumbs up. <laughs> and does anybody need more time? It looks like we got some jams with a lot and some jams with not a, not a lot. There's a few. No, there's some. Oh, there's a bunch. I think that's a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, they look good. I'll start to go in and leave comments. Oh, look at you, Jared. You're such a good coach. So, you Jared, is that the program? <laughs> Jared, when you do this virtually, is that something that you recommend doing as uh, teachers are filling in all of their gripes? Because this is something we do at the beginning of a coaching cycle, right? As they're filling in their gripes, would you be going in and leaving comments throughout or would you wait until the end to do the comments? Um, I wait until the end just so that way as we talk through them, as they're auditing them, like if I'm on one -on one or a small group, I wait till the end so that way we can kind of all discuss them and then leave the feedback in there for them to, to go back and look at later. Um, doing it large groups like this, um, you just kind of do it at the end of um, at the end of everybody auditing it. And one more question. Uh, what do you do if you have those teachers that you're going through this gripe jam? You have those teachers who write one or two things only. Keep trying to, to probe them, you know, ask them, ask them questions about what they're putting down, maybe some other struggles that they're having. Just kind of keep keep questioning them to see what you can pull out. Sometimes you can be successful and then sometimes you're not. 
And since we're kind of modeling this, let's um, go ahead and go to the person. Um, so go to the number ahead of you. If you're number 20, go all the way to number one and look at their jam. So look at the person that's ahead of you. And if you have one that's blank, just keep going until you find one. And we okay with leaving them feedback, Jared? Does that sound good? Um, we can, or um, we can have them, I guess let's, let's have them audit it real quick. Let's have them okay. put it um, and audit, and then we'll have them, or then we'll do the feedback part. Okay, sounds good. So here's an example that Jared had um, of a jam that he's done before. And so you can see all of these different posted notes. And what we're about to do is kind of rank them in order of more or less frustrating. So right here, you're gonna have your more frustrating activities. So you're gonna move your post-it notes around and then your less frustrating activities are gonna be over here. Um, so right here, communicating regularly with parents. That can be really hard for a lot of teachers and frustrating for them, so that's gonna go at the start. We're getting quiet students to participate more in class might be really less of a frustration for you. So you're just gonna order them up on um, more frustrating to less frustrating. So go ahead and move your post-it notes around. And Fred's gonna play some music. challenge by the number of people that are affected. So now you're going to look at all of your different challenges and determine the effect of people. Um, so you're going to bring them up if it affects more people and you're going to bring them down if it's less. So you're going to keep them in the less, um, more frustrating and less frustrating range, but then you're just going to slide them up or down um, or put them in the middle depending on how many people are affected. Rick, hit the music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
great. It looks like everyone did a really good job with that activity. Do you want to head and let them do the feedback part? Yes, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now you're going to go to the numbers um, Jamboard ahead of you and leave some feedback with the blue posted note. So you're gonna use the blue sticky note to comment on another person's post, um, leave them ideas to, and what challenges you might see um, and just get them kind of, maybe leave them an encouraging note. Um, so go ahead and leave some feedback on another person's Jamboard. <laughs> Okay, at this point, um, you've probably ranked them all, and there's probably one that really stuck out to you, yeah? So if you found one that um, is really that uh, thing that grinds your gears, as they say, share your top challenge in the chat. We're kind of curious what it is that is affecting not only you, but everybody else, like students, colleagues, whatever, the, your top challenge that is the biggest problem. Go ahead and plop that right in the chat. Not sure if that's the right verb, but yeah, go ahead and plop it right there. Lack of time for sure. That is huge. Oh, internet connectivity, tech issues, totally. Teachers being willing to meet for coaching. Yeah, that buy-in is tough. Distance learning, time, but capitals, and then time, but lowercase. I feel like it's both the same concept. Uh, consistency, let me try that one again, take two. Consistency, that's huge. Um, uh, teachers so overwhelmed and have no time, for sure. Plus one, Lori, yeah. Teachers willing to meet for coaching, that, or Laura, sorry. Change, people always say they want it, but they don't, like, how can I get things to change without doing anything different, is uh, what they might as well be saying. Um, admin, uh, Teachers not understanding the role of a coach. Yeah, for sure. Too much content, same amount of content, way less time. Yep. Communication support from the top down. That's a big one, especially it's one of the main tenants in the curriculum is really getting that admin support and buy-in. Um, pointless pop-up meetings. <laughs> uh, Jared can speak to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, moving from remote learning to hybrid in-person, terrifying. Yeah, my, my district has done it three times now. We were distance learning, we went to hybrid, we went back to distance learning, and next week we're fully in-person every day because apparently it's 2021 and the virus went away. Whatever. Um, 
not the IT guy. I'm the instructional coach guy. I like that one. That's a challenge every day for a lot of us. For sure. Equity issues. I'd love for you to speak to that if you want to. Like specifically, is it tech equity, equity just in general issues? Um, I, I would love to hear more about that. Resistance to change. Yep. Ug. Yeah, I've, I more feel that one than understand it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tyranny of the urgent. Oh, I love that expression. Or as I often will say, uh, like poor planning on your part does not represent an emergency on mine. Um, I'm the IT and coach. Ooh, yikes. Projecting coaching time, lol. I am the IT guy, but not always respected as being, yeah, for sure. Free how to move from technical to coach. Cool, Let, let's move on. Um, this one's you, right, Jared? Yes. I believe that's what Stephanie told me to do. Because we all take orders from Stephanie. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. Um, all right. So let's talk about the five-step uh, certified coaching model. So a lot of you are um, either getting ready to put in your portfolio or some of you are kind of in the beginning or in between sessions of it. Ab Ab this, right? Um, <laughs> So, what is the five-step coaching model? Why, why is this the model that we should be using? And it's because research has shown um, to influence teacher practice that personalized coaching is the best way to do that. Whole group PD, um, something like maybe we're used to with being a trainer, is not going to be as effective in changing or shifting teacher practice into using technology in impactful ways. So the five-step coaching model really can empower teachers uh, because it's personalized. It's personalized for them. They are able to work with you to identify um, their challenge. And maybe they have a lot of challenges, but you can help narrow it down with them um, into some sizable chunks that they can work through with a one coaching cycle or maybe multiple coaching cycles. Um, it's goal-oriented. So you have a goal. You are investigating a... A challenge, those challenges and strategies that you can use to um, help them with that. It is very collaborative. That's one thing teachers like is, you know, you're there with them. You're holding their hand at some times. Maybe you're leading a lesson and then they follow you after that. But whatever it is, it's a collaborative process to where you are, you are there to build that relationship to make the teacher feel comfortable so that they are engaged and wanting to continue um, to improve through the, the coaching cycle. Um, then you select that tool. So after you've done some research, you and your teacher have collaborated, you've selected a tool um, or tools that you want to use, and then you implement it. And then after the implementation, you are reflecting upon that. And so for those of you that are in the process of um, putting in your application, you've gone through this process and you know how important it is, especially for me as a coach in that implementation and reflection piece. Sometimes identifying the challenge and then investigating and selecting it are the easy part. It's that implementation of it um, because sometimes things don't always go right. And when they don't go right, the teacher gets defeated. And so a lot of that is reflecting upon how that was used and working with them to see what happened, what can they make improvements on. Or sometimes it's like, okay, that didn't work at all. Let's go back, let's rewind, and let's select uh, another tool. And so all of that is important. And you work through that within an eight-week process. So the coaching uh, program or curriculum says that, you know, a coaching cycle is about eight weeks. Now, sometimes they can be a little bit less than that. I try to keep it at the eight week maximum, but in our current environment right now, um, trying to get teachers to stay on a long cycle like that can be a challenge. So it has, it's a very good coaching model. I've lived this coaching model for four years now, and it really can change the school culture um, but you have to have that administrator buy-in and stuff that also can be a challenge as you try to get to this point uh, on a large scale with teachers. So, oh, Rick says yours is about closer to five, six weeks. That's about where my, mine is at as well. 
it's a lot of it's due to urgency. I think like they're they want something now, and the sooner yes. we can find it and implement it, the the better. Becky, it looked like you were raising your hand. Yeah. So Jared, can you just walk us through because this is something I still uh, struggle with, and I've gone through quite a few so coaching cycles. You start with a gripe jam, either a whole school or a large group, all of that. How do you go from gripe jam to now we've started a coaching cycle? Because, and I ask this because I. I'll do the gripe jam. And then, um, you know, I have some teachers where I'm like, that is definitely a challenge we need to work on, but they don't sign up for a coaching cycle. Or I have too many teachers sign up for a coaching cycle and I can't, I can't work with 20 teachers. So how do you go from, we started here, we had our meeting. I told you what I'm going to be doing. We did a gripe jam. Now I've selected and we're going through this five-step process. Um, if you're if you're sitting back as a coach and you're looking at all the teachers gripes, say after the gripe jam had happened and you're kind of auditing it yourself to decide, you know, who's who's got the, the biggest challenges or how you want to proceed. A lot of that comes down to things that I've done in the past is I have taken that information and I can either approach the teacher, especially those challenges that seem really big or those that are. The, the first adopters that want to jump on a coaching cycle, those are the people you tend to go to first. Um, but if you are struggling trying to get people to get on a coaching cycle, one of the things you can do, because especially too when they say, I don't have enough time or I'm too busy. What I like to do and what I'm going to do next week is I send out an invite to my teacher. So, hey, coaching cycle two is about to start. You know, how can I help you with the challenges? A lot of you have identified a, B, C, or D as challenges. I'd love to help you. I can take, you know, you set your number of people that you can, you can work with um, and then have them sign up. And then also too, on the form, you can also put in there, are you interested in being part of coaching cycle three or coaching cycle four? And then just trying to meet with those teachers and find a way in. Cause some of them will put, yes, I want to be coached. And then when you go visit them, oh, well, I don't have a lot of time. And so it's, it's finding, finding that that in is definitely a challenge. I hope that helps answer your question. <laughs> um, someone asked, can I also have teachers from other schools besides where I work? As long as you can meet with them, I would say absolutely. I mean, especially yeah. now, if, if you're meeting virtually anyway, why not get people from other schools? So, yeah. If, if you can get people to join a coaching cycle, that's the most important thing. I think for me too, it's all about language when you're starting a coaching cycle. Um, so just having that relationship with teachers, I try to, um, I mean, it's crazy my schedule, but just trying to be present in the buildings where they can see you and where you're able to walk around the building if you are in person, um, especially like remote learning, it was hard. So I had to do like office hours and then I would have to like talk to teachers like, hey, I really miss the kids. Can I come in your classroom? Um, just so they could see me be available. That really helped me getting started in coaching cycles. Um, so just focus on building that relationship first with teachers and they'll feel so much more comfortable working on some of these really hard things that they need to fix in their practice. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, like, you know, a lot of us say, oh, I don't, I want to be the coach, not the IT guy, but sometimes you have to be the IT guy. Um, like Stephanie said, being present in the building and being seen. Um, yes, that'll go, hey, my printer's not working. Can you come take a look at it? And you might go, oh, geez. Um, but it gives you an in. So you can go into that teacher's classroom and maybe they have tons of stacks of paper and be like, you know, the, the, the paper, your, your printer goes down quite often, doesn't it? And yes. Well, you know, would you be interested in maybe trying some tools and, or strategies to help cut down on that load? Because it looks like you got a lot of paper and you probably are getting a lot of paper cuts and, um, you know, going through staples like crazy. Are you interested in having a conversation about how to use Google Docs or cami or whatever it might be and just trying to trying to see where they're at um and of course building that relationship because you're helping them with that problem in that very moment um and sometimes it takes a few few times a few printer fixes to to get them to go okay i'm getting really tired of this maybe i should you know have that talk with you about how i can do things better yeah anytime you can save teachers time they will appreciate you um so that's kind of how i started four years ago was just quick short here is um, copy and pasting. A lot of them were going up to file 
and then they would hit copy. I'm like, all you have to do is hit Command C and then Command V to paste it. And that was just, even though it was like a couple seconds, those seconds add up. Um, so just sharing those little tips with them will really allow them to trust you and really build that relationship. And Becky, what were you going to say? There was a question in here from Daryl, and I, it may have been answered. I'm trying to answer them in the chat and can't quite keep up around, are there parallels to cognitive coaching and coaching for equity cycle cycles? And I would say definitely, um, especially when we look at that cognitive coaching. A lot of times that I've done coaching cycles with teachers, they'll say, like one great example, the teacher didn't have time. And we kept diving into this, and every single week it was like, okay, how could we switch around your schedule again? Okay, let's try this strategy. Okay, let's try utilizing this. And then we finally realized it's, we can't change time. And what is it that you really, you are really wanting to like change and understand about your practice and how you can support. So if you're already utilizing other coaching models and coaching cycles, as you go through the curriculum, you are going to find those parallels where it's like, okay, this might not fit to a T, but this does fit and I can try this on. So don't be afraid of this being a whole brand new, completely different thing. It really is just tying in either a lot of what we've learned or new ideas to support what we've already been doing. Yes. And then, oh, Jared, what's your favorite part of the five step coaching cycle? Do you have a favorite part? Um, my favorite part is probably the reflection piece is just sitting down with the teacher and finding out what worked and what really didn't work. And so, for example, right now I'm ending some cycles uh, at my own school. And so one of my teachers was like, I, I've loved everything that we've tried. I really want to continue on to the next cycle. And so that makes me happy is when they want to stay on a cycle. So, you know, they want to join join third cycle. And so depending on how many people you might have, you can keep those people on or maybe say, well, let's take a break. Well, I'll catch you on the fourth cycle or, or whatever it might be. Um, but that's always exciting to me when you get to sit and debrief with the teachers. And then a lot of times things are hard. So I, the same teacher, for example, used when we were 100% virtual last week, uh, Pear Deck for asynchronous learning. And she had a lot of struggles with that. And so um, I think we talked through it all and, and and did some pretty good reflection there. But again, I just, to me, that's, that's my favorite part of it is just when the teacher sees when things work and the aha moments. That's Fred, what's yours. For me, it's, um, if in through the identify, investigate and select, no matter what tool and someone asked, does it have to be Google? Absolutely not. Um, it can be any tool that you want it to be. But um, for, for me, it's implement, because if it's like, hey, we could use, you know, we, we could use Cami for this, or we could use Flipgrid, or let's dig deeper into Seesaw, since that's apparently our LMS for whatever, I won't get into that. But the point is, um, if they're like, let's show me how to do that, and they want to team teach with me, I, I love that. I love getting a chance to work with other teachers and team teach with them. So for me, it's implement. And then there's a question in the chat. Um, when looking for teaching teachers for cycles, are you asking for volunteers or asking for colleagues um, that you already have in a relationship with or good rapport with? I say it's definitely a mixture of both, depending on you know what situation you're in. Um, so for example, I started at a new building last year, so a lot of it was going to teachers I already had a relationship with. Um, and just see, you know, getting their trust as to letting me into their classroom. And then from there, this year, it's been asking for, for volunteers. And then you also have on the flip side, people who are forced onto a cycle um, by their administration. So you, you have a mix for sure. Right. And then we just want to know, um, in five words or less, what is one goal that you're going to have for yourself over the next um, month? So are you going to complete part of the curriculum? Are you going to do a coaching cycle? Are you going to do a gripe jam? Um, what is your next step? And create a goal out of that. So let us know in five words or less. Oh, submit my application. Yay. <laughs> Woo -woo. Yeah, starting a new coaching cycle. Love it. Complete my portfolio. Yeah. Lots of coaching cycles. 
start the curriculum, create a giant, and feel free to steal any of our resources um, from the slide deck and use with your teachers. Um, I know Becky, I stole something from her last time we did this cohort and she had like a gripe jam that she did in a Google Meet and I used it with my teachers. So feel free to steal, reuse any of these activities that you might need to use with your teachers. I find yeah, if fine. people don't like the word steal, if, if you change your mindset to a uh, loving tribute, um, <laughs> it it's, works exactly the same. That's, I like that one. Yeah, that's I like how I feel less guilty about taking other people's resources and repurposing them because it's a and, loving tribute. And if you that. create something um, for your teachers, please share it in the Google chat. We would love to see it and celebrate with you. Um, so please share those resources. And then now we will take any questions um, that you might have. So feel free to come off mute or pop them into the chat. There was a question asked, uh, what do I need in the portfolio as evidence in the 100 hours? So you don't. The 100 hours comes after you get your uh, certified coach badge. What you need in the portfolio, and we'll go over this later too uh, in later months, you just need to show proof of coaching cycles. You need a portfolio that shows data that you've gone through the process uh, because they wanna see that you've tried on some of the curriculum or hopefully all of the curriculum at one point or another and data to show the growth. So don't uh, stress about showing 100 hours prior to applying. Also, if you were seeing in there, people are already submitting their portfolios and all of that. And if you are just getting started and have not looked at the website, do not stress. Like the, some of these people were with us for the last cohort. Some have started quite a while ago. Um, we just started this new cohort and the plan is by the end of this six months, we will have taken a deep dive into each component of the curriculum and we will be sharing out portfolios and videos towards the end. So you will be ready to submit by then. So if you're just getting started, you are in the right place. If you've already started and you're here to support and grow and learn, you're also in the right place. Thank you all. Um, Connect Hub, sorry, I you all can jump in and answer questions too, but I did just see there's a question about Connect Hub IO that's totally sufficient. That's what I used and I I loved it. Um, Same here. In fact, there was a, a, there are many, many others that exist out there. I haven't found one better than Connect Hub. Mm -mm. It's pretty fantastic and it's, I mean, you can get a free trial, which is more than sufficient. The free version is pretty much all you need, but if you're willing to throw um, a little money towards it. I'm sure they would appreciate it. It's it's a fantastic tool. And I know people that use just Google Forms or Google Calendar. Um, when you get into the coaching cycle after you're accepted, you do have to keep track, um, and you can upload a spreadsheet. So I usually just use a spreadsheet to keep track. But if you use um, the Connect Hub, I believe if you pay, you can get a spreadsheet of all the data you put in. You can, yeah. And just so you know, I mean, we're not sponsored by anyone, but Susanna, who did create Connect Hub IO, she is also part of our EC Open chat. So if you have questions, you can throw them in the chat. She's very active and super supportive. Um, she's also a coach as well. Yep. I do want to share really quick before we hop off our book study, which uh, Francis will be moderating for us. We're super excited. We are reading Courageous Adventures. And um, we will be, our first book study is going to be on the 26th. But in the meantime, you can participate in the slow chat. So if you're not able to join on the 26th, but you still want to read the book, you can join in the slow chat, put your answers in there, and then we'll just, like dive into each of those responses on the 26th. I strongly recommend doing that. It does help with thinking about it ahead of time. And this is the book, Courageous Adventures by Jenny Magira is the book that um, is recommended in the curriculum. So that's why we chose this book and we chose to do this book again. I really like it um, and it's been helpful. Thank you, Shannon, for putting that link in there. But yeah, so the link is in here. I'll put the link in the chat again. Jared just put the link on Twitter. So definitely check there. Um, okay. The calendar invites and I have not been friends. So those of you who have been emailing me, I I'm trying everything besides adding all 500 people to the invite itself. 
So here's what I recommend. <laughs> Go into the uh, website, the bit.ly EC open chat website, and I'll, we can put that in here. Scroll down to the bottom where it has the calendar, and in the bottom right-hand corner of the calendar, click on the plus Google Calendar. If you do that, it will automatically add all of the meets into your Google Calendar. And even if you didn't get an invite, you will have them there. And this is only because I don't know why it doesn't like me. Um, There's a limit on calendar. Is that why? It's 200 people. Okay. Well, uh, we, we way uh, hit that limit. And so there we go. Thank you, Steph, for showing this. Go to bit.ly backslash EC open chat. And then down at the very bottom right corner, we hover over it again. If you click there, it will add the link. It'll pop up and say, do you want to add this to your calendar? And um, it showed on hers, this calendar already exists in yours. And then that way you don't have to worry about if you got the invite or not. Um, if you need the invite, keep emailing me. I'm trying to keep up with them, but I did get, I don't know, like a hundred some this past week that said I didn't get it. I'm really sorry. And all of the recordings and slides go on the website too. If yes. you're unfamiliar with the website, it's a really great resource. And um, if you want to look into Connect Hub, Susanna did a session about it back in September, and you are more than welcome to watch it. Um, also, I did a session on your portfolio and what that should look like. So feel free to go through there if you're ready for those next steps. And then the book study information's here. I'll just interject. When when I applied, I followed um, Steph's So You Think You Can Coach YouTube thing. In fact, I the letter of recommendation from my admin, I showed a screenshot of what uh, Steph's admin did, and my admin more or less copied it verba verbatim. He changed the names and the pronouns. That's almost the only thing he did. So it's a super good resource. All right. Uh, thank you all so much. If you continue to have questions, which we hope you do, bring your questions, resources, all of that, the ed tech. And I'm so sorry, I don't even know your name because you're in here as ed tech workshop uh, through in his website link with a lot of resources. So thank you. I see you. I'm waving and saying thank you. Uh, <laughs> and continue to share those. Uh, if you want to share them in the chat, do that. We've got our Google chat room, if you're not in the chat, it's only because it was blocked by your domain for one reason or another. And so you can uh, send me an email with a different Gmail that's probably not work domain and I can add you there. But yes, thank you so much, Rick, Steph and Jared. This was wonderful. And they are all three certified coaches who have been through this and have been leading this for a while. So reach out to them with any questions. Oh, Greg, okay, thank you, Shannon. Greg, yes, thank you for your resources. <laughs> All right. Do you want to hit stop record? I will.